Steve Close here presenting uh, or sharing another Tony Heller video debunking the climate change global warming hysteria. Hope you enjoy. Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. Government temperature graphs are right at the core of global warming alarm. Graphs like this one are being widely circulated, showing close agreement between five different government agencies. And this close agreement is supposed to frighten you and make you believe that carbon dioxide causes things like the Australian bushfires. In a previous video, I compared these graphs with the behavior of glaciers. And in this video, I'm going to examine how well these government temperature graphs correlate with snow cover. Over the last 60 years, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has been increasing exponentially. All of the many climate conferences and treaties have had no impact on atmospheric CO2 levels as Asian countries continue to build hundreds of new coal-fired power plants. And this increase in CO2 is supposed to be the reason why the government temperature graphs are increasing. Without these government temperature graphs, climate alarm wouldn't exist. BBC presenter Brian Cox waved this NASA temperature graph around when he was debating Australian Senator Malcolm Roberts. Cox was saying, I've got the graph, I've got the graph, as if it was some sort of ultimate authority. So now let's look and see if these graphs are actually credible. This graph from Rutgers University shows autumn snow extent in North America. Snow extent has been increasing for 50 years, with recent years having the highest snow extent on record and a similar story with winter snow extent, which also has been increasing for 50 years. Now let's take a look at what snow extent means. This map from NOAA shows the current snow cover in the United States and southern Canada. You can see that Canada is completely covered with snow, and about half of the United States is also covered. North American snow extent is the area of North America which is covered with snow. Canada is always covered with snow in the winter, so variations in North American snow extent depend on how much of the United States is covered with snow. And we can see from these graphs that the amount of the United States covered with snow during the snow season has increased by a large amount. This tells us that Arctic air masses are tending to penetrate further south in the United States than they did 50 years ago. So we would expect that the long-term trend in fall and winter temperatures in the United States would be decreasing. And this is exactly what the raw temperature data from the United States Historical Climatology Network shows. This graph shows the average afternoon temperature from September through February at all United States Historical Climatology Network stations. The warmest snow seasons occurred in 1954 and 1932, and the trend has been downwards for a century. Snow seasons in the United States are getting colder, which is why snow extent has been increasing. This graph shows the September to February percent of days above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, they've been decreasing. And it's the same story for the number of 60 degree days and 70 degree days, 80 degree days, 90 degree days, and 100 degree days. It's very clear that the long-term trend in afternoon temperatures during snow season has decreased significantly in the United States over the past century. But NOAA doesn't release graphs of the raw temperature data to the public. Instead, NOAA releases graphs which look very different from the raw data. NOAA shows snow season afternoon temperatures increasing, with recent years being the warmest on record. This is the exact opposite of what we would expect with the record high snow cover in recent years. The NOAA temperature graphs make no sense. Whereas the raw temperature data does make sense before NOAA tampers with it. Most people outside of government agencies understand that snow is associated with cold, not warmth. This graph shows the amount of tampering which NOAA is doing to the raw temperature data. They cool the past about 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit and warm the present by about half a degree Fahrenheit. This is about 2 degrees of data tampering. And that is how they turn a long-term cooling trend into a warming trend by good old-fashioned data tampering. NASA does exactly the same thing. This was their U.S. temperature graph in 1999, showing long-term cooling. But they've since altered the data and now show warming over the same interval. I'm going to flash back and forth between the two graphs a few times. 2019, 1999. 2019, warming. 1999, cooling. 
This alteration of data has been done right in front of the public, but few people remember. Published NASA and NOAA temperature graphs do not show any indication or disclaimer that the data has been altered. People just assume that they're seeing the actual measured thermometer data, but they aren't. Imagine what would happen to a private company if they altered their financial data to turn a downward trend into an upwards trend. It would be a huge scandal, but government scientists are rewarded for doing exactly the same thing. But this story gets much worse. This graph shows the adjustments being made to the U.S. temperature record. As we've already seen, the past is being cooled and the present is being warmed. This is the same graph, but instead of plotting time along the x-axis, now I'm plotting atmospheric carbon dioxide. This graph is very enlightening and shows us exactly what's being done. The amount of adjustment being made to the temperature data precisely correlates with the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The data is being altered to match their theory. This is the ultimate in junk science. These government agencies want you to believe that carbon dioxide controls the temperature, so they're altering the data to match their theory. And these are the same government agencies who are creating the global temperature graphs which are supposed to frighten us. Like the U.S. temperature data, the global temperature data is also being manipulated. This animation flashes back and forth between the NASA 2001 version of global temperatures and the 2015 version. You can see how NASA has doubled warming from the year 1880 to the year 2000 by altering the data. Like with the U.S. temperature data, they're cooling the past and warming the present. But the focus of this video is the correlation between U.S. snow cover and U.S. fall winter temperatures. The U.S. temperature data is extremely important because the vast majority of high-quality long-term temperature data on Earth's surface is in the United States. This map is from NOAA and shows where they have daily temperature records from 1891 to 1920. You can see that the United States has the majority of them. There's some in Western Europe, some in Australia, and very few in the rest of the world. Thus, the data tampering which is going on in the United States is critically important for the long-term global temperature record. And even now, the coverage in much of the rest of the world is very poor. The coverage in Africa is very poor. The coverage in South America is very poor. Greenland, Antarctica, and even much of Australia. The data tampering which is being done is completely destroying our understanding of climate. They're showing us the exact opposite of what's actually going on. In this graph, I've overlaid the carbon dioxide curve on top of snow cover. You can see that autumn snow covers increased just as carbon dioxide's increased over the last 50 years. This is the exact opposite of what climate experts predicted, and it's also the exact opposite of what they tell us is actually happening. They claim that snow cover has decreased in most areas of the globe. But if we look at the Rutgers University graph of snow cover for the whole year, we can see that for the past five years, snow cover has been consistently above normal, and it's been above normal for most of the last 25 years. Basically, you can't believe anything which climate experts are telling you. Albert Einstein said, blind belief in authority is the greatest enemy of truth. And climate is the ultimate example of this. U.S. fall winter snow cover is increasing just as temperatures are decreasing. This is exactly what would be expected, and it's also the exact opposite of what government experts are telling us. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time. Thanks for watching. Head on over to Tony Heller.